Tom here from Lawrence Systems, and we're going to talk about how to back up a Synology using Hyper Backup. I've done some previous videos about Active Backup for Business, which allows you to back up G Suite, which allows you to back up Office 365. I've done videos on Surveillance Station. I've done videos on all kinds of different Synology tools, and I'll leave links to those down below. The next question is, how do you properly back up the Synology, and what is Hyper Backup and their C2 service? And that's what I wanted to talk about today. Now. The first step is making sure you have both Hyper Backup and Hyper Backup Vault installed. There's a couple different backup methodologies that you can use with Synology, such as their Cloud Sync, but specifically today, we're just going to focus on Hyper Backup and how it works. Now, on your destination, you need to have Hyper Backup Vault. On your source, you need to have just the Hyper Backup loaded. Vault is where all of the data gets stored easily on Synology. There's a few different ways to do it, but it's one of the easiest ways. The Hyper Backup can live on both though. And what I mean by that is you can have Synology A and Synology B and load Vault on both and load Hyper Backup on both. And I bring that up because this is something we've actually done for some of our clients that have two buildings and are able to back things up between two different locations. Synology A backs up to Synology B and Synology B backs up to Synology A. The only thing you have to be careful of if you're setting up that type of scenario is that you're not checking the box to say backup absolutely everything on a Synology, or you'd back up the backups from each of the other Synologies and kind of create a problem. There's also situations, and we have another client we're working with this with that has a series of Synologies all backing up to one. That works perfectly fine too. You can have a one-to-many ratio. Matter of fact, you can even have more than one instance going from Synology A to Synology B of hyper backup. So you can set up different schedules based on different scenarios or different timings or when you want them to run and create a whole series of individual jobs. We're going to walk you through the process, which is actually really easy for creating these backup jobs in the Synology system. So this is our target system, which is an RS1221+. Plus. And I just did a review on that, and I'll leave links to the reviews I did on both of these Synologies down below. We have the Hyper Backup Vault loaded, and let's create a destination for it. There's not really much inside of the Hyper Backup Vault. We do have the tasks listed here. You can set how many concurrent tasks will come in there, the tasks that are currently linked to it. So we can see that this one right here, it can give you some stats some task settings, so you can kind of see the backups and a history of it. But like I said, we're going to create a new one. These are all lab systems, by the way. This is not production in case you see different passwords or keys and things like that that may be shown in here. But we're going to go ahead and create a new folder. So we're going to create a folder for the backups to go to on our destination NAS. YouTube, let's go about tube, right? Demo backup. We don't really need a recycle bin on this. We're not even actually going to be sharing it. Now, encryption. Do you want the destination folder to be encrypted? That's up to you. It is always better to encrypt data at rest, but the good news is the data that we're going to be transferring, I'll show you how to add an encryption key to the data when it's going to be already encrypted at rest. So it's up to you if you want to double encrypt it right here. Probably not a bad idea. You can't have too much encryption, right? But be wary. If you forget the encryption passwords in Synology, They've done encryption in a way that you can't just recover it. It's it's solid. Don't worry. Uh, feel free to test it. And maybe I'm wrong, but uh, my understanding is everything I've read on it. It's quite a solid encryption methodology they use. Therefore, just don't lose the keys when you do this. For this demo, we're not going to encrypt it at rest. Enable advanced integrity checksum for data integrity. Compression, probably don't need it, so we'll leave that blank. And apply. All right, now we have our destination folder. Now, the user, we can create different backup users. We're just going to use the admin user, but you can create a special dedicated user just for backups if you'd like. That way, you don't have to necessarily keep the password to one Synology in another Synology. Just throwing it out there. Not everything should be done as admin, but for the demo here, yes, we're going to do this as admin, and we're just going to use this user right here. So hit OK. All right, there's our YouTube backup demo created on our destination Synology. All right, so now we go over to our backup system, the system we want to back up when you open up Hyper Backup. And I have a few different demo jobs I have set up here from the testing. And let's start a new backup task. We start, hit the plus button, go to a data backup task. Now, while USB is supported, it's not my favorite. And the reason why is because people think, oh, I'll remember to just swap those USBs and plug them in and go through this process of running the backup against an external drive. Yes, it's supported. Um, traditionally, and I just 
statistically have seen most people fail at this and they do it once and then forget and then hope that they can recover whatever losses they had when they accidentally delete a folder or lose a bunch of files, etc. cetera. Um, it does support it. I will at least leave it at that. Now let's talk about the other services down here. Just to mention they exist, Dropbox, Google Drive, H Drive, Azure S3 Storage, Rackspace, and a couple others in here. So you can back it up to more than just what Synology offers, which is the Synology settings up here, which is a remote NAS device as in another Synology remote NAS device or their Synology C2. We'll talk about C2 next, but let's cover this one right here, remote NAS. Go next. Enter the IP address of the destination. 218. Transfer encryption on. Trust. Now, one thing is if you have this set up, between two Synologies and are remote from each other and they're traversing the internet to get the data across. I highly recommend a VPN, even though the data in flight is going to be encrypted, it's just one more layer of security. So this traffic isn't just passing publicly in case there's any flaw found within it. Just something I uh, prefer when I'm setting these up. We're gonna go over here to the, de the destination one, go over to Bitwarden and I'll copy the password. And this is where Synology makes life convenient. Because we put the password in, we can hit this little pull down. It talks to another Synology NAS. And look, there is our YouTube demo backup folder that we created. Whoops. And we'll just go ahead and create a directory within there. Now, this is important, and they give you plenty of characters to describe this. When you have a bunch of Synologies backing up to another Synology, and we have clients doing this, you wanna make sure that you properly name all of these. That way, if one of them dies, or there's a problem and we need to restore from it, especially from a catastrophic failure, we know exactly which one it was. So uh, do take the time to name that. Now, as far as why is my Synology called Albert, I have no idea my staff named it for anyone that may ask that in the comments. Next, what to back up? And this is where you can be selective, and go through all the folders. You can just select everything on this device. That, that would be quite a bit. So we're not going to go there. We'll choose uh, Active Backup for Business because we have some data in there from backing up computers. Uh, we have this C2 backup folder. Surveillance. Now, it's great to back up surveillance to another system, but the question comes up quite a bit is, can we back up Surveillance Station and all of its videos to the cloud or to another server? It really comes down to bandwidth. You frequently, when you have a lot of cameras, are producing video at a rate greater than your internet. This happens all the time. It doesn't take that many cameras before you've now have more video than you can offload through your internet service, unless it did it absolutely full time. And uh, that can create some bandwidth crunches. So before you check that box and before you wonder why the task is taking so long, especially if it's actively recording, uh, that is sometimes a challenge and it's a math equation. Figure out how much bandwidth you have on the upload and whether or not you're going to be able to get that data somewhere else. Now, locally, it makes a lot of sense and frequently because of retention policies or just because of people wanting better redundancy, they'll have two Synologies and one dumping another, all the data from one to another, um, even though it's a lot of data. So we'll go ahead and choose these two backups right here. Hit next. But I will mention before we go any further, I guess I should mention this file filters. You can exclude or include specific files. So it does give you some granular control. We're just going to grab everything in those folders there. Applications. You can back up the applications themselves, which is great because now you get all the settings, everything in the applications. And you can just check this and get all of them or just back up this. For example, backing up hyper backup sounds redundant, but you're actually backing up all the jobs that are within there. So we'll go ahead and say yes to that. Um, YouTube. Demo. Enable detail change log. That's up to you. I kind of like it. So if you wanted details of every file that was changed, that's nice. Backup schedule. When do you want it to back up? You can do daily, weekend, weekdays, you know, whatever works for you. Integrity checking. So you can do a series of integrity checks on there. Enable client-side encryption. Now, this is important. If you don't encrypt it, the other Synology, that's the destination, will be able to see the data. Now, I bring this up because this isn't just when you send it to a Synology. It's really when you send it to any destination is if you don't encrypt it, even if the data you know, in flight was encrypted, the 
destination, the Synology backup, if you don't encrypt it, well, there's that risk. And if you're putting things into the cloud, you do need to choose encryption on there because, well, it's just important to encrypt all your data at rest, unless there's some reason you don't want to, but you can just decide whether or not you want to check that box or not. If you do, make sure you do not forget the password because it's non-arbitrary. It's not easy to recover this and Pretty much the encryption I use is it's going to be a brute force attempt. So the more complex the password, the less likely it is during your lifetime that this password will be crackable. All right. So actually, we'll go ahead and put it in here. It does need a minimum of eight characters. We're going to use the real fancy one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Hit next. Yes, if you forget it, you don't have it. Enable backup rotations. This is a nice feature when you want to say, all right, how many versions backwards do I need to keep? Revisions. I actually like that they have kind of a simple plan here called the Smart Recycle Plan. It's got a pretty staggered way that you keep, you know, revisions daily until you get back a few weeks and then you just have a few snapshots going back. It allows you kind of a good balance of what I need going backwards or what I need in terms of if I think I'm missing a file, but I thought it was there, but it was been a couple of weeks and being able to roll back when you do the restore, uh, pretty handy to have. So we hit apply and you can customize retention to fit whatever policies uh, that you need. Backup now. Sure. Why not? Backup initializing and away it goes. Now, while that's backing up, here's one of them that's already been backed up and no good backup plan doesn't come with a test of the restore because backing up without ever testing the restore is just, well, wishful thinking that the backups are there. This happens, unfortunately, all too often when people go, I thought the backup was working and they never, ever tested the restore process. So let's talk about that. Go here and just click restore. Now we we'll just select this one right here. That's the local one. Select this backup. Last backup was here. Hit next. And we said, do not restore system configuration, but we could. And there's the different revisions from when I set this up a few days ago. So each one of these is just a different revision in case we wanted to back up or restore, I should say, any of our Synology configuration settings. That's where these are right here, but we're not going to do that because, well, we're running a backup job right now, and that could probably be interesting restoring now. Let's go over here to shared folder. And the first thing it does is give you some warnings that say this shared folder exists on your Synology NAS. What that means is the data that you're trying to pull back is going to go in a folder where data already is. So use this with caution when you're going through and restoring things, because if you restore something that, well, has data in it, you're going to end up with some problems. Let's look over here. Let's see. Docker. Hey, why not? Let's just rest actually we can restore. Well, that may cause a problem I'm doing a backup right now. So maybe we just want to restore something from the XCPNG lab and Docker. Next. Apply. Oh, won't do it while it's backing up. We'll skip ahead here. All right, now that we have our backup actually working and finished, now we can actually do the restore. And just make sure I mention this. These are rever revisions you can see when you go backwards on here. If you wanted to jump to any particular date and restore that version of whatever you're backing up. And by the way, because when I started this backup, there was less files than there are now. So as I go through this, you can see that there's actually more folders getting listed as we go forward in time till we go all the way to the present. So let's go ahead and check those boxes again. And we'll just restore Docker. I don't even know what's in it. So hit next, apply, and it's going back reading. Oh, there's really much, not much in Docker, so that succeeded quite fast. But you get the idea that, well, pretty easy to back things up. Now, the other ones I have in here, the other demos I have set up, say Synology C2. You're probably wondering, what is a Synology C2 server? Synology C2 storage is designed to offer you the most integrated, cost-effective cloud storage solution for Synology NAS users. They started their own backup service. That's what this is. And uh, we've started testing it out. I really like the way it works. It's rather simple. And of course, how much does it cost? That's what everybody wants to know, right? They've made that part pretty clear. Got a terabyte of data, $69 a year. Two terabytes, $139. 10 terabytes of data, $624. 
you can see that it's not hard to really figure out. They have a couple different plans. Uh, they have two different data center locations. So if you need to store things in Frankfurt, Europe or United States, Seattle, um, I don't have any other real information on it because it's really quite simple and it's been around only for a few years. I've read a few different reviews of it. We've, like I said, selected this for a few test backups uh, that we've been using with some of the Synologies. And so far, it's actually worked quite well. I do like the way the service works. I don't have any offers or affiliate or links for it. It's just something we're testing out just to let you know. We don't have this currently as of February 2021 in any real large production setups. But we've heard from a few of our clients that are using it that they really liked it, so we're exploring it as well. Now, what does it look like when you back up to that? So right here are the two, Demo Synology C2 and Synology C2. They're actually both demos that I have set up. The difference between them is this one's encrypted and this one's not. And let me show you what that looks like. So let's go over here to when you're signed into Synology C2 and what it actually looks like to be inside of here. This is the encrypted one, and this is the C2 backup demo. And this is another demo we have. We actually tried it on a couple different machines for this. Now, when you go in here and you browse the files, opens up a new window, and here's all the files in there. So yes, they're viewable on the cloud, but let me explain. So when we go over here and we look at the demo C2 right here, and we'll go to and edit the task, can see there's the C2 backup test, application settings. It's all the same when you're doing this as it is when you're doing a backup to another Synology. So for the process of setting up Hyper Backup, that's all the same other than there's a spot when you set up a C2 server where it asks you to log into a C2 server with the account that you created for that. Now, a couple things that I thought was really interesting. I'm able to create multiple backups from multiple different NASAs, but the NASAs cannot see each other when they're doing restores. Anytime you do a restore or a backup, they're only able to see the folder that you created for that particular NAS when you sign in. So even though you're signing in with the same account, it does seem to keep them all separated, which is great. Now, more important, encrypting all the data. For this particular one, I did not choose client-side encryption. I did it on purpose. For this one, I did choose client-side encryption. So if we go to edit this one, we have the option to download the encryption key, or we actually use that same wonderful one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight password. So here's the files, and let's just view one of them forums.jpg or PNG. All right, some ugly graphic that Tommy created that never seen the light of day, which is good. But here's those different files, and you can see these are some of my YouTube video files that I dumped in here for the backup demo. Let's go over and open up the other one that's encrypted. Now, with it being encrypted, you have one of two options. We can upload the decryption key to the Synology system. So note for the decryption key task, the Synology C2 server will use encryption and password and will not save it when the task is done. If you don't agree to use this, you can always use the Hyper Backup Explorer, which is this right here. I have it running inside of a VM inside of a Synology Hyper Backup Explorer. I thought it was neat. I didn't even realize they had a Hyper Backup local tool you can use that'll allow you to browse local backups or browse a C2 server, um, but I'm fine with doing it online. Now, what I mean by that is I can just put the password in or upload that file. I can download the encryption key and upload it to there. And this is going to allow me to view the files because it's doing it right inside the browser. What happens when we close the session and start over again? So let's close it. And it asks me for the password again. So it's only saving on the session of that moment. Once the session goes away, it goes away too, because if you upload it and save the encryption key with the data that was encrypted at rest, it's, well, easily decrypted again at that point. But it's clever that they offered this. I like this as an option. So if you don't trust the cloud or for whatever reasons for data privacy, you absolutely need it to be encrypted and never decrypted on that endpoint for whatever jurisdictions or rules that in compliance that you have to follow, um, they do offer that as an option. Now, as far as restoring things from the Synology Cloud, it works exactly the same way. We go over to Hyper Backup, close that, and we can just 
choose any one of them and hit restore data and it'll allow us to go through the same process again. So Hyper Backup, definitely a great solution. The C2 servers, um, I like this offering from Synology. I think it's reasonably priced. The testing we've done with it's gone well. And as I stated, based on some of the clients we've talked to that are using it, they really like it. It's been around, I think, for almost two years now, uh, but it's you know one more solution to add to the uh, solution checkbox list that Synology offers. I'll leave links to some of the other videos where I've talked about Synology, the reviews I've done on the devices that I was uh, using for this particular demo, and the uses of active backups or alien station and some of the other Synology features that we really like that we've been using for a little while. All right, and thanks. And thank you for making it to the end of this video. If you enjoyed this content, please give it a thumbs up. If you'd like to see more content from this channel, hit the subscribe button and the bell icon. To hire a Shure project, head over to lawrencesystems.com and click on the Hire Us button right at the top. To help this channel out in other ways, there's a Join button here for YouTube and a Patreon page where your support is greatly appreciated. For deals, discounts, and offers, check out our affiliate links in the descriptions of all of our videos, including a link to our shirt store where we have a wide variety of shirts and new designs come out, well, randomly, so check back frequently. And finally, our forums. Forums.lawrencesystems.com is where you can have a more in-depth discussion about this video and other tech topics covered on this channel. Thank you again, and we look forward to hearing from you. In the meantime, check out some of our other videos.